Hello, hi, and welcome to episode number 26 of An Italian Knitting Podcast. My name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter. I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, our daughter, and our cat. And I'm currently sitting in my living room today just because I think there's slightly better lighting from the window and from the lamps. However, I do hear a little bit of noise coming from the people upstairs, so we will see if it was a wise choice. That's the choice we made, or I made, and you're living with my choice. I also plugged in a microphone, so that might be better than usual. I don't know, we'll see. Today's episode will be just a very standard one with finished objects, works in progress. I don't think I even have acquisitions, so I'll be just filled with knitting and knitting knitted pieces. I have four, I think, finished objects, maybe three, and I have a few things in progress. Let's start with what I'm wearing, which is also my first finished object. This is a Lento sweater by Joanna Yetala. She published the pattern as part of the Lane magazine. I actually don't have the original magazine, that original issue of the magazine. I just bought the pattern off of Ravelry, just like hand-picked it, purchase, give me that pattern. I think I much prefer to do so than just buying magazine and books and get a whole lot of patterns that I might not love every single one of them. I much prefer just browsing and say, yes, I do love this pattern. Let me buy that single specific one. I'm just kind of a, more of a, I think it's because I don't like to be surprised with like a whole range of stuff or patterns. I much prefer just narrowing down my search to one specific thing and get that one. Anyway, uh, the Lento, I think doesn't have a super special construction or like particular shape. It's mostly a raglan construction. It has actually in the pattern a double folded collar. I replaced it with a regular collar, so just one layer. Unpopular opinion that I have is that I do like a simple collar like this instead of a double folded one. I think every single knitter that I talk to likes and prefers the double folded neckline. I'm the only one, unpopular opinion, um, but I went for like the simpler, more like minimalistic version. And the special, what, what makes the Lento pattern special, it's that it's recommended for a fingering plus mohair combination. It's a pretty standard combination of yarn. Let's call that like a DK weight total yarn thickness. However, the gauge that's recommended for the pattern, it's very loose. It's almost like an Aaron weight type gauge. So a gauge that you would find on a pattern that recommends a Aaron weight yarn. And it's quite fascinating because it means that the fabric that you get if you use the recommended yarn is very, very lightweight, kind of not see-through, but like not super dense, quite airy. And I think it just gives you some extra dimension to your knitted wardrobe. <laughs> I don't know how to say. And I did not have a knitted garment in my wardrobe that has this type of kind of airiness or airy fabric. So I kind of wanted to go for it. And I bought this pattern a few months ago almost, yeah. And I do still plan to make the Lento sweater with a fingering plus a mohair, like it's instructed in the pattern. However, this time around, what I went with was yarn that I had in stash, and I had a fingering plus two mohair strands. This is Knitting for Olive Merino, so the fingering strand is Merino, and the two mohair strands are the Soft Silk Mohair by Knitting for Olive, and this is the color color autumn and I actually had bought this kind of weird combination of like three strands to make the peacock sweater by Lynette. I'm just showing you the peacock tee so the t-shirt version but I had in mind to make a 
peacock sweater with this combination, this, these yarns. And the peacock sweater, as you can imagine, is just this same lace yoke pattern, but in a sweater form. So I'll, I'll put it here. And I, when I kind of read through the pattern for the peacock sweater, I've noticed that it didn't have short rows to raise the kind of back of the sweater and give you more room at the front. I've also noticed that I didn't love the double folded collar that is part of the pattern. It's quite like quite tight around your neck, like it's a statement collar. And I did want it a more mi minimalistic type look for the collar. So I was like, mm, I do want this beautifully, beautifully colored autumn type garment, but I don't want to do a, lo a lot of mental gymnastics to figure out to add short rows and change the neckline for uh, maybe more stitches at the cast on edge. I don't know, I didn't want to do math, mental math. And so I was like, okay, I'll take the yarn that I had set aside for the peacock sweater, throw away the peacock sweater pattern for now, just for now. And I just used the lento sweater pattern for my autumn -y garment. And as I said, the pattern is meant for fingering plus a mohair. So what I've done here is I, I have an extra strand of mohair. So the fabric that you're seeing on me, it's a little bit thicker than the pattern recommends. I think it still works very well because again, the gauge for this pattern is very loose. So you can fit in another strand in there and keep the same gauge. And I think the sweater will still look plenty um, soft and drapey and cozy. So I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's very cozy, very soft. Again, it has an extra strand of mohair, so it's even fluffier than what you would normally get, and I love it. I went for slightly longer sleeves than what I usually do, and maybe like a little bit of a longer body as well. So I kept knitting until I was pretty satisfied. I actually finished the entire quantity of yarn that I had, and I was like, okay, that's good enough. I just re really went for the cozy vibe and embraced the cozy autumn -y vibe. And I actually was able to knit on this in the dark, like very low lighting situation, like watching a movie. Even for the raglan increases, this pattern uses easier increases than you would normally find in a raglan construction. In a raglan construction, you would normally find make one left and make one right um, on either side of the raglan stitch. But this increases in the pattern and even easier. And so it's even smoother to go and like watch your TV or watch a child or watch, I don't know, something else that you need to pay attention to and just go for even the raglan increases round, you can do without paying too much attention. And since it's a raglan, when you kind of feel satisfied with the width, circumference, yoke circumference, you can actually try it on and see if it looks good without caring too, too, too much about the actual number of stitches. So I think it's always nice that you can do something like that. So not just trust blindly the pattern in terms of stitch counts, but you can actually try it on and see, okay, yeah, that feels good. I confirm that the stitch count of the pattern is good for my armpit area or well, maybe I want to knit a few rounds more. Yeah. And I did say this is good to knit on in the dark. However, at some point I did drop one of the four stitch markers for for the four raglan increases, I dropped it. I think I must have dropped it on the floor. And then for a few rounds while I was in my daughter's bedroom, I was just, I guess, doing three raglan increases, like I increased only at three raglan points. And um, I didn't notice <laughs> because when you're just, I don't know, talking with someone or reading a book at the same time, you just, your hands just flow. The knitting flows from your hands and you just go, go, go. And I was like, I don't know, I looked at my project after an hour or so and I was like, hmm. And one raglan line, I guess, just stopped because then I dropped the stitch and I did not increase after that, but yeah. 
I did tubular bind offs for sleeves and body. I don't know why I was pointing here and the body as in like bottom ribbing and means that you do two rounds of double knitting and then you do the Italian sewn bind off. I feel like it just looks a bit neater. Yeah, I think it just looks, looks pretty good um, as the bind off. Knitting with three strands like I did wasn't the easiest, I think. The mohair strands kind of got tangled up, just maybe, not they felt, but kind of. So when you have like those two strands of mohair, sometimes they would stick together and so they were just a little bit more mindful to knit with. You, I would have to pay attention to how the yarn looked, like the balls of yarn look like on the floor or in the project bag. If they were like too tangled, I would take the time to kind of untangle them, roll them around and straighten the, the three strands so that they would come from different, like from the three balls, but they were kind of aside from each other and not like all tangled up. But other than that, it was pretty pleasant. I do love Knitting for Olive, Merino and the Soft Silk Mohair. So I would highly recommend in any kind of combination like one merino one mohair or like two and two i mean it just gets very expensive very soon but for this specific pattern what you do is you use i think a much smaller amount of yarn than you would for a regular sweater i don't know like two thirds maybe a little bit more but two thirds of the amount of yarn that you would use for a regular dk weight sweater so it's worth trying or looking at this pattern if you do want to go for, for like a more spancy more like fancy yarn combination i think it would be a, a pattern to look out for i do plan another lento with a hand dyed yarn plus a mohair i already bought it i think a, a year ago no i think it was the beginning of this year when rebecca and amy rebecca Claw and Amy Palco did their Lento call. Let's Lento call. I didn't participate in the end because I had other projects on the go at that time and I didn't want to put them aside to make a Lento. But I mean, yeah, nine months later, I did my Lento. Am I late? A little bit. And in terms of that peacock sweater that I mentioned before, I do want a peacock sweater. It looks so, so stunning. The lace pattern is lovely. I think this is the best fitting t-shirt that I have in my knitted wardrobe, even maybe outside, like my regular wardrobe, not just knitted wardrobe. Blah, blah, blah. And I do want to take the time to kind of add short rows to the pattern while I do the, the peacock sweater and also modify the neckline or the collar so that it fits my tastes. What I'm thinking, instead of actually taking the peacock sweater and changing it, maybe I could just knit the peacock tee pattern with long sleeves because the peacock tee does have short rows and it has a collar that I love. So I think I might just take this pattern so the T pattern and just make it into a sweater by making longer sleeves. Maybe I would have to cast on maybe more stitches for the underarm or kind of change that so that I can easily fit a t-shirt underneath the sweater. But yeah, so maybe I might do a little bit of modification and you'll see maybe a peacock sweater soon. Cool. This sweater was my main finished object. I think the rest is accessories. I have a Sophie shawl. Sophie shawl, if you've taken notes, <laughs> uh, is the long version. So the shawl is this one, like a very long scarf. And the Sophie scarf is the little teeny tiny scarf, like skinny one. These are patterns by Petit Knit. I forgot to mention that, but they are garter goodness. So just garter forever and ever. You have some increases uh, that are at regular intervals. And when you've 
completed half of your yarn. It's typically the midpoint of your project and then you start the decreases throughout the second half of your yarn. This is how I would always make this type of scarves so that you can actually use the entire amount of yarn that you have. But if you want to, of course, make a slightly shorter scarf or shawl, you can just start decreasing, even if you didn't complete half of your yarn. You do you. This is your craft. There's no need in police. But yeah, anyway, I did use the entire amount of yarn that I had. And this is, this is Camaro's Host. I don't know how to say it. And Camaro's host uh, has some cashmere. That's the only word that I understand. It has 9% of cashmere. I think it must be like alpaca and wool. And I bought this in Prague at the Wool Point yarn shop. It was lovely. I also bought some mohair to go with it. And I did start this Sophie shawl with a combination of this yarn that I ended up using plus a strand of mohair. And I actually went as like after the midpoint, like after using half of my yarn. And I was like, hmm, I mean, it looks very soft and lovely, but around like near my neck, I can feel the mohair. And I think it, if you never like sweat, like if you never get warm around your neck, this would be perfect. The mohair, like when I tried it on, didn't irritate me at all. But I could tell that like with some warmth and maybe like sweating a little bit, like biking, it would get a little bit itchy or just not comfortable to have mohair around my neck. So I frogged and started from the beginning from a tip here and just with the single strand. To be fair, it looks very similar because the mohair that I picked kind of blend in very easily. So I don't think it gave, I don't think it's a loss. That's what I'm trying to say. I think just this yarn is beautiful enough by itself that didn't need a mohair to make it more beautiful. Lolo, make it more beautiful. <laughs> yeah. This is another project that you can do without looking super, super closely. The only mindful thing about this pattern would be that you do need to do those decreases or increases depending on what side of the shawl you're on. And uh, you do have those increases or decreases at regular intervals. And so you kind of need to remember what, when is the last one that you did so that you can make another one in X amount of rows. So what I did is every time that I did a decrease or increase, I would put a stitch marker right on that decrease. And so that if I put the pattern down and picked it back up, I, I could look and see, okay, so I did decrease, I don't know, X amount of rows ago. So I have a, like X amount of rows to go before making another, or the, or the, another of those decreases or increases. So that helped. The only modification that I did was to knit a smaller I cord. So I don't want to say how big the I cord is because maybe it's like a pattern secret, but I did one less stitch for the I cord. <laughs> maybe you can guess, but just to give it a more like saddle look, like a more minimalistic look. Today we're all about minimalistic looking knits. Yeah, I think this shape would be, I think, very unisex. I had my husband try on this as soon as I finished it up. We were at my in-laws and we were there just chilling and doing nothing really, just chatting. So I was like, can you try it on? It went well with the outfit that he had on. And although I think maybe this yarn is a little bit too variegated for him, I think the shape is very, very unisex. I would see him wearing uh, maybe dark gray version of this or like a black or dark blue and he agreed so I would recommend this kind of type of shawl scarf for anyone really 
it doesn't have anything particularly feminine about it I don't think so good for everyone you can make it I give you the permission to make it with whatever gauge that you want I didn't even measure my gauge in the end I, I don't th I think it's a smaller gauge than what the pattern suggests and you can do whatever you want you want like just go with whatever gauge you feel like it's good for your yarn and just finish it up and then do the other half don't worry about what gauge was recommended even if you didn't have a lot of yarn for this scarf it would still look beautiful like even if you did half if you had half of my yarn and you had this length like you can still make a little scarf at least for Italy I guess I'm basing my advice on the weather that we do have here and even a small scarf in November December like kind of um autumn or beginning of winter works well you don't need like a huge bundle of air and weight wool to keep you warm so if you are in the similar weather as me I would recommend this with whatever amount of yarn you have I know many people do use the Sophie shawl or Sophie scarf for gifts so if you are a person who does gifts for Christmas or any other occasions Maybe this one is for you. Last but not least, finished object is my half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. And this one is my second one. And I made it with kind of a blue shade, a blue palette. This is technically, I think, called gray. But to me, probably because it's close or next to the blue, dark blue, this to me kind of gives light blue vibes instead of gray, but I do not know. I do not know colors very well. So <laughs> this is the color combination that I picked for my second one. And it's your standard triangles wrap. If you're familiar with this, it is a square of fabric. like so and it is knitted in like one color first and then you start the when you when you're done with your first color you start with your second one so there's no intarsia there's no like color work it's just like one piece at the time so it's very very mindless and you you need to use short rows to make this shape the the square shape cut in two halves and the pattern recommends wraps and turns wrap and turns i did german short rows because i think they're easier to do and i will link down below the tutorial that i followed for this modification so i just followed a video of someone who patiently sat there and explained how to replace the wrap and turns with german short rows and the other thing that i did was that i slipped the last stitch of every row to create a somewhat like neater, 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 like a slicker edge here compared to what the pattern recommends. The pattern says just knit, 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 which means that you would get the garter bumps at the edge here. And I didn't want the garter bumps. I think in hindsight, if I were to knit my third half and half wrap, I would go with the eye cord edge, like an embedded I cord not an applied I cord I would never do that to even my worst enemy just like slipping two stitches here at the end of each row to give it kind of like an I cord look because I, I mean I do think that the slipped stitch at the edge looks good enough but I think with a little I cord will look even better it is very squishy, it's all garter stitch and it just like, it makes you want to just cuddle up on the sofa like this and take a nap. One thing that I did not do very well is the bind off. So my first color was the gray, light blue color. My second color, which is also the one where I did the bind off was the dark blue and the bind off it's a bit tight like I don't know how to share like 
but like the garter is very stretchy but the bind off it's a bit tight I did Icelandic bind off which is the bind off that I always do for garter and I did it with like two sizes up in terms of needle size so I did the shawl the, the wrap I guess with US 4 needle and the bind off with US 6 so it is two sizes up I think it's still too tight I should have maybe gone up another needle size or maybe picked a different bind off there are like plenty of stretchy bind offs I this one for me worked for the first half and half that I did and didn't work very well this time I think like it's a bit too too tight I do not know if I want to go back and undo this bind off and did it again I could because this Icelandic bind off it's not a sewn bind off so you don't go with like an, a needle and do all the steps because if to undo that you would actually have to patiently undo that it's not just rip 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 but with Icelandic bind off it feels kind of regular bind off you can just frog frog and pick your stitches back up again and redo the bind off so I could I'll give it a few more days and see if I'm still up for it or if I should just leave it. For comparison, the first half and half that I did has the same modification. So slipped edge, German short rows, all is good. And the bind off looks beautiful. So I don't know. Wait, which one was the bind off though? Hmm. yeah well the bind off was with the yellow and I mean I don't know it's not a stretch either so I guess yeah that's it <laughs> after this comparison of the bind offs I'm gonna say that this works well I'm using it very frequently and the the tighter bind off doesn't bother me and I think that this half and half wrap will be a Christmas gift for my mom I do have a good amount of blankets hand knitted or even not hand knitted ones and I really don't absolutely need another one I mostly knit it because I did want a garter stitch project that was very relaxing very chill that you could pick up anytime so this was I think a one of those famous process knits that people talk about that it's not all about the finished result but it's more about the process and I think this for me was it just the process very relaxing calming so it served its purpose to me and my mom when I was at her house the other day was like "Ooh, this looks lovely I think she was very complimentary over the colors and the actual I don't know just drape of the fabric and she has lovely kind of grayish or ash blonde is that the color like grayish blonde ish but grayish so anyway I think kind of you're blonde or had like lighter hair I think the blue is a good color for you that's my understanding anyway <laughs> I do not do all the color wheel studies or the seasons I don't know any any of that but I think blue looks good on blonde people correct me if you want but this I think will still go to my mom as a Christmas gift unlike me she actually travels for work so she actually needs to wake up in the morning and go like with her car go places so I think this could serve many purposes it could be like a lap blanket in the car or just a wrap that you would use as a scarf on her sofa at night to watch a movie or read a book so I think she will like it I hope I hope she will like it last time I said that I was not gonna cast on another half and half wrap or I didn't have intention to cast on another half and half wrap but I might have to I don't have any yarn that would be suitable for a half and half triangles wrap we're talking about 300 grams of each color would be like three skein, big skeins of fingering weight yarn 
and I don't have any of that so if I do want to start another half and half I will have to get some yarn and it could be a good excuse to get some yarn it could be maybe my Christmas gift to myself to get some nice yarn for a new half and half I do know the color if I were to start another one it would have to be in green I don't know how maybe like um oatmeal plus a green dark green color I don't know and before looking at works in progress I have one refinished object if we want to call it that and I will try it on for you but I can also just show it first this refinishing or fixing the project that was already finished it's part of Anna's fall fix along cow mau anyway let me try again this is part of my effort of fixing an existing finished sweater that I wasn't using as much is part of Anna's fall fix along that she is hosting I think she did it last year too right uh, it's just a she wants to inspire us to take those garments or I guess projects in general and that we don't wear as much or we don't love as much the have imperfections or mistakes or anything along those lines like we don't feel they're perfect they, they have maybe potential but they're not perfect yet and take them and fix them so this is one of my no frills sweaters by Petit Knit this is in drops Lima the yarn held up beautifully it does peel a little bit but I do like depeel it sometimes and I'm happy about it the result and what happened to this sweater is that the sleeves were too too short the sleeve were maybe here no mm, maybe here I would wear the sweater but I would notice that it wasn't perfect and so what I did is I went I took the sleeves and I added some extra length the good thing is that I had yarn as a leftover that I hadn't done anything with it yet maybe because deep in my heart I knew that I wanted to add some some more length so I didn't actually use those couple of balls of yarn that were left over from this project they were still there so I took the plunge and added some extra length and how I did it was that I looked at this cuff and I saw that it was twisted rib and I was like twisted rib meaning that your knits go through the back loop so ribbing itself to me it's not the most pleasant knitting experience because you, you knit pearl knit pearl so it's already kind of not fun for your hands right like it's a little bit cumbersome but if you do twisted rib it's even worse because then you, your knits go through the back loop so I was like I'm not gonna redo this cuff this cuff looks good enough to be honest the bind off is not super neat but I was like this does the job I don't want to re-knit the cuff so what I did is I picked up with a circular needle that I use for I used for socks so it's very thin needle maybe like US 2 US 1.5 something like that with a long cord and I just went through one leg of each stitch across the entire sleeve so yeah, I would just I picked up all the stitches and I did the same so picking up stitches with a different circular needle also for socks and I did that a couple of rows above and so I had kind of two lines of knitting held on the cords of those circular needles and then it snipped 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 in the row between the two cords and I unraveled and that just means that you detach the cuff from the rest of the sleeve and so what you can do then is to fill the space with more knitting to make the sleeve longer and so I just took the sleeve which 
like the stitches were held on that famous circular needle and I knitted a good amount. I actually don't know where, maybe here, I think here is where I joined new yarn, I don't know. But anyway, I did a good amount, five centimeters or so. And then to rejoin the cuff to the new piece, the, the extended piece of knitting, I did a join that's called Russian grafting. I did this before for a same, like a similar surgery where I either added fabric or removed fabric and reattached some ribbing and you can tell that it gives you a little bit of um, decorative edge, decorative grafting, so it's definitely visible. Does this look better than the other one? I think they look the same, but yeah, it's, it's a little de decorative. So it's not seamless. If you do want a seamless grafting look, you would want probably to go with Kitchener stitch. So with your actual sewing needle and do all the things. I was like, no. And the ration grafting, you actually do with a crochet hook and it's the easiest thing. I, I don't crochet, I only, do like a chain. I can only do like a chain for a provisional cast on um, or I can do the Russian grafting. So if you ever want to try in your life to lengthen sleeves or shorten sleeves or lengthen a body or shorten a body of a sweater, I would 100% recommend this method of inserting a cable, inserting another cable, snipping in between, detaching, knitting more length and reattaching with Russian grafting. It sounds like a lot of words, but it doesn't take much time. I think it maybe took me maybe 15 minutes per sleeve, maybe more, but just because the knitting part, you still need to knit some length, knit some length, so that, that's still quite consuming. But the actual attaching and detaching was very fun and very I think rewarding because now, and I'll show you actually, now those leaves are a good length. Ta -da! Like they, they go over my palm a little bit, which is I think a perfect length. So I think I'm very, very satisfied. I was playing with the idea of lengthening the body a little bit too, because I do have some extra yarn, but the body is not that short. I think it's just a regular, a body. I just want, I, I was just maybe going overboard because I'm like, oh, I did this, maybe I can lengthen other pieces of this sweater, but I don't think I need it. I think the sleeves were the problem and they're now not the problem anymore. So yeah, thank you Anna for the inspiration for the fall fix along. I've not fixed anything else, I don't think. I think this was the, the fix, one, one per year. Every year I'll give you a fix, Anna, and I'm gonna be happy with it. I don't want to fix all my wardrobe because then there's nothing to fix next year anyway, right? I'll keep this cozy sweater on me while I talk about works in progress. First work in progress you've not seen before, I don't think. And it's a sweet shop blanket. You actually have seen it because I did a couple of weeks ago a video about how to make your own kind of DIY scrappy advent calendar if you want to based on your own stash and you can gift it to a friend or to yourself but I was showing this project there because this is my scrappy project of the moment and it will also be the project on which I add advent calendar yarn as in, I will be receiving a couple of advent calendars with yarn in December and I will put those mini skeins, mini balls of yarn into this project. So far what I've added here are just leftover yarns that I had in stash. This is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose and it's actually studied to use up your mini skeins and this is study so that each colorful triangle is no more than 10 grams. So if you do have 10 grams mini skeins, this is perfect. Those mini skeins could either be fingering that you 
held together or just decay weight. The main color that you carry throughout really gives it like a less scrappy, less scrappy look. If you, I think, were just to attach these three colors together, maybe like striped in a project, a blanket or a scarf, it would look good, but not like super polished. And I think the addition of this cream main color that you can do like a darker color. I did cream because I had some, some yarn in stash that I could use for this color, but you can do maybe a darker color to a gray, a black would look quite stylish, but yeah, I think the main color just gives it more cohesiveness throughout the project and it gives it a less scrappy, less scrappy look. I think you know what I mean. And yeah, this, for example, comes from my half and half wrap. Yeah, and I guess when you look at it, then I don't know, you have all the memories of all the yarn projects that you've did. I don't know. I really like the idea of having an on the go scrappy project. I think it has been many, many years since I had one, right? Not sure. These also, I think, would look lovely as a scarf. I don't know if Laura has plans to make this into other accessories. She has a cushion pattern where you have, I think, nine of these squares arranged a little bit differently, but they make a cushion cover, like a pillow cover for your sofa. And I mean, even if she doesn't come up with a pattern, I guess you could make this into a scarf or cowl. I think anything that you can think of <laughs> because these garter squares are very fun to make and they are just super colorful you don't get bored like this is not one of those garter projects that you get bored with i personally never get bored about like garter anything so maybe my opinion doesn't count but i've heard many many people who are working on this project, they said this is a garter stitch project that you don't get bored with. So trust their opinion. My opinion doesn't matter because I love anything garter and I would not get bored even if this was in just one color. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I don't think you can see anything, but I have just a, oops, a petite neat giant bag this is the big version of her bags that she has on the website and i was a little bit bummed when i actually received this huge project bag i've showed this before i think in another video and i was like when am i gonna use such like a huge project bag like my cat could fit in here my daughter could fit in here like this is unnecessarily big but see a project came along that could actually I think benefit from such a big project bag because this is tiny now but I hope that in the month of December this will grow and I might need all the space that this project can offer me. I have just all the scrappy yarn from my stash. I have some fingering weight yarn that I will then hold double for this project. I have some DK way yarn that I need to just hold single. My main colors are two, but I guess it's the same color to be fair, but they are actually different yarns. I don't even know which one is which, but one is Fil Colana Merci, which I already had in stash. I intended to do a fingering weight sweater. Haha. <laughs> never gotten around to it. So I'm holding this fingering weight yarn together with Drops Flora in a very similar color. This I bought to match this quantity. So just I'm holding them together just because one is half cotton and half merino and the other one is just wool and alpaca actually. So just I'm blending them together so they give me a good warmth but in terms of color, I don't think you would be able to differentiate them. So if I were to do like a triangle, triangle with this color and triangle with the other color, you would not notice. Just 
maybe one would be lighter as in like one would have cotton and be less cozy but I don't know but yeah I have put leftover from my Sophie shawl that you just saw I have a little bit more than 10 grams left because I think I wanted to be safe and I didn't actually use the entire half of my yarn before starting the decreases on the second half so I do have a little bit of a mini bowl to add to this blanket which I'm not complaining about yeah this is a little bit of a leftover from the lento sweater that you've seen as first finished object yeah I'm just throwing them in here and whenever I feel the inspiration to add a new square I will add a new square and I'll keep doing that for this upcoming couple of weeks in November and then I think in December I'll try to keep up with opening the advent calendars and use those mini balls right away this I think will it, it's most likely wishful thinking because I might not have time in December to attach like lots of squares to this blanket but and I have in a little pouch which has lots of like fluff on it but this little pouch has a mini skein which is good to weigh if I do have enough left over to actually make a an extra triangle with the colored yarn or not and I have like a scissors and a needle to weave it ends I also have a hand cream if I ever am inspired to put some hand cream after I knit I never do that I just want to be fancy but I'm not fancy I have another two works in progress that are actually in progress no actually even the third one is okay we will see later but I have my an Italian winter shawl so this is a pattern that does not exist this is a pattern that exists as a draft in my Google Drive folder it's a triangular shawl which is all about the garter and the eyelets and if you remember my summer scarf is also garter and eyelets and also my cowl that I published not too too long ago has garter and eyelets so it's just a different iteration different incarnation a different version of the same base kind of element that I really love so there's an eye cord edge embedded is that embedded the word like the one that you just knit while knitting the rest of the project there's no going back afterwards to picking up stitches or anything there's garter stitches there's eyelets and it's also again a project where you just finish up your entire yarn that you have so you can make it smaller bigger any gauge that you want I'm using drops air meaning that this is the softest shawl that you would ever imagine I had this yarn in stash because I was supposed to do a swap with Erin and I wanted to send her some drops air because she really liked it and she picked this gray color the swap didn't end up working on my end because the postal Italian postal office ruined the package the packet never got to her and I didn't resend it again because I was just so scared to spend money for nothing and the, just the package would be ruined different story I was very sorry that Erin never received her drops air but I think and hope that she got hold of some other drops hair in the meantime because this is very squishy and soft and yeah I'm using it for this kind of design very simple design this will come up in December so it's next month I think I'll try to publish it at the beginning of December so that maybe you can just uh, knit it during your Christmas holidays Christmas break with family as you can imagine it is very mindless and you just go 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 and you count your garter bumps garter ridges in order to know if it's time to work an eyelet row so there's no like keeping track of the rows or putting stitch markers it just you just count okay I have enough garter ridges then I'll do another eyelet row so and the reason why this is not finished as you can tell this is still on a cord with stoppers 
the reason why it's not finished is that I don't know how big I want it to be. I have another 1.1, 1.2 skeins, I don't know, a skein and a little bit more. And when I say skein, I mean a bowl. So a bowl and a little bit more. So I could make it a little bit longer, but I don't know how long is too long. I don't know what I want to do. I, I think I will just compare it with other triangular shawls that I have in my knitted closet, knitted wardrobe and see if it's comparable to the shawls that I wear the most. Maybe I can also just look up measurements on in the internet of like just average uh, triangle shawl measurements so that I pick a size that's good for people. I don't know. Again, you can do whatever you'd like with this pattern. So even if I end up saying knit this amount of centimeters or, or like this amount of balls of drops air, you could do whatever you'd like. So. I just want to put a, a good reasonable estimate in my pattern when I write it up so that's why I kind of want to nail the perfect length or size for the shawl but yeah, anyway I didn't cast it off because I'm like do I want to cast off now or do I want to add one repeat or two repeats and make it bigger so I didn't have enough mental energy to make that decision and so I cast it on another one this is, I guess, a second sample uh, of the an Italian winter shawl, same construction. This, I think, in gray, in green, will be a little bit difficult. Sorry, let me do this. Difficult to see, although it does fit in the frame of the video a little bit better. So maybe you actually see it better. I don't know, but the, you see the eyelets, you see the garter, and you actually knit it this way. So you increase here and you just have rows that are longer and longer and you can just make it how long you want. I think this would be a little bit too small. It could be a bandana. But yeah, this is not even one ball of yarn. This is like less than a one ball of yarn. So I have five actually that I bought. This is the Amore. Amore WS. I don't know what WS would mean. Should I know? I don't know. The brand is Borgo de Pazzi. It's an Italian brand. I think they're from Florence. They are from Florence because it does say on the label. And this is super soft cashmere. Although it's not all cashmere. This is a commercial brand of yarn. I bought it at my local yarn store. Definitely not like 100% cashmere. It has wool, viscose polyamide cashmere it's a little bit of everything it's very soft so I think it'll just be sorry it'll just be good for your neck your your neck would love this and the 115 number that you see here is the meterage of the ball of yarn so this is 50 grams per 115 meters but they also make other versions of thinner yarn maybe even thicker but yeah, the number here if you see other bowls of this Amore by Borgo de Pazzi, the number means the meterage, so thicker or thinner. I went for this kind of middle ground. I think this is technically worsted, I don't know. So again, same construction, I built in eye cord, eyelets, garter stitch, go until you finish your yarn or until you're happy with the size and you'll be very happy. I think, or I'm very happy. You'll be very happy if you like to knit garter. Do you like to knit garter? If you're watching this podcast, you probably do. And the last in progress thing that I have to show you is a Stockholm sweater by Petit Knit. And I feel like I've said Petit Knit 300 million times this episode. That's okay. The um, Sweater is a very chill, fairly oversized, relaxed fit. It has a double folded collar. This project I actually started last year, or maybe very beginning of this year, but what I mean is I started before this summer. And so this was in hibernation for many, many months. 
and I will I don't know if I do love I mentioned it but I don't know if I love a double folded neckline but I already knit the collar itself I just need to sew it down there are just pins um, stitch markers for now just to keep it in place but I will just fold it down and I might actually end up liking the folded neckline or folded collar on this so I'll, I'll, I will not like remove it I will not frog to make it like a single layered collar just because I now like single layered collars but I'll just keep it and sew it down and use it this is a dropped shoulder construction it's not my usual raglan it actually has dropped shoulder meaning that I did knit the front the back piece is flat I joined them then in the round for the body and for the sleeves what I've done not that I've done what the pattern says and I just followed the pattern is to pick up stitches along the armhole and then you kind of follow the pattern I think it has a little bit of a short rows shaping uh, to for the very very beginning of the sleeves but then you do a tube towards the cuffs while decreasing and I did one sleeve before the summer and I'm I did put all the stitch markers where whenever I did the decrease and that actually helped me whenever knitting this second sleeve which is what I'm doing right now and I was just able to see how many decreases I ended up doing by counting these stitch markers I feel like in the end comparing with the pattern I did end up just doing the same amount of decreases that the pattern called for so nothing different than the pattern but it was just nice to compare with the already knitted sleeve sorry do you see the cat you want to say hi This is a love story. You want to sit down here? The yarn that I'm using is Filcolana Arveta. I don't think how I say Arveta is the correct pronunciation, so I apologize. I think someone mentioned it in the comments at some point, but Filcolana Arveta, maybe? And Filcolana Tilia. So the fingering is technically a thing called like a sock yarn because it does have nylon in it and the mohair is mohair kid mohair and silk kind of a standard standard blend for you and the color is light truffle uh, so I mean if you have been here for a while you might remember this from at some point in the past my promise to you is to work on this over the next couple of weeks and have it done by next episode. I really like the fit. I tried it on and I think it, it works well in terms of ease. Although I'm knitting size extra small. I usually knit small sizes in petite knit patterns. However, I think in terms of measurements, I'm between an extra small and a small. I just wanted usually to do like a beggar fit however I did go through a lot of the Ravelry projects for this Stockholm sweater and a lot of people mentioned this is more oversized than the already oversized petite knit fit so I think typically petite knit goes for a good amount of ease in terms of recommended ease for you for your size However, I think for this Stockholm sweater, the pattern is even more kind of relaxed and chill. So I went for the extra small size. I am at the very top of the size range for that size, but I think trying it on, it works well for me. Everything is on hold or not everything, but like body and one sleeve are on hold on those usual barber cords that I love and a lot of people love and what will happen to my sweater is that I will finish the sleeve as in I will knit it so that it matches the other sleeve so a little bit longer I will remove the stitch markers and soak it like block it it's like soak it in water leave it then to dry flat so that it will just relax a bit and then I can try it on before do the ribbing I do that all the time like I pre-block I think you would call it like pre-block 
the project so that before doing the ribbings, so cuffs and bottom ribbing, I can actually see how long the sweater will stretch before I finish it up so that I don't have to frog the cuffs or the bind off to adjust the length after blocking the project at the very, very end. So I kind of do a pre-block. I know many people do, so if you've not tried or like if you sometimes come up with a sweater or garment that it's a little bit too long, sleeves that are too long or body that's too long or too short, maybe you want to give it a go to blocking. So like washing and let it dry before do the ribbing so that you can actually see if the sweater will stretch, will grow when you actually block it. So, Which now that I'm saying it out loud, maybe what has happened with the one that I'm wearing, the one that I had to lengthen the sleeves for, maybe that time I didn't pre-block it, like I didn't block the sweater before do the ribbing. Maybe I just did the ribbing and I was like, yeah, it will grow. And then it didn't grow enough for my sleeves. So, And those were projects in my life. I did mention that I did not have acquisitions, uh, but what I meant, I guess, is that I didn't have yarn acquisitions, like I didn't buy any yarn. However, I bought two things. No, I bought one thing and one was gifted to me by my husband. The thing that I bought are blocking mats. So blocking mats are those puzzle pieces, like very squishy, softy puzzle pieces that you put together and then you can put your garments to dry after you wash them so that you can block them. You can either lay them dry flat. You can also pin them down like if you need to stretch or if you need like a specific maybe corner or if you want to, I don't know, pin the sleeves at a certain angle, then you can pin the garment or the project on top of these mats and I used to actually block my stuff, needed stuff after washing that on yoga mats. However, I think I've been using the same yoga mats for a while and it doesn't look good anymore. It kind of looks a little bit used and yeah, I'm just finally switching to these puzzle pieces. What are they called? Blocking mats. And this is just an Amazon purchase. I actually used to own something similar when I lived in the US. I don't know if I had this same exact brand, but it was something very similar and I used to love it. And then what has happened is that I think the cat scratched that or maybe when I moved back to Italy, I just left it, I think, with someone. But yeah, blocking mat. My husband went to San Francisco not too long ago for work and he brought back a few things and one of them is a project bag from this yarn store that I used to go to in San Francisco. They're, um, I think, pretty popular. If you are, are you in San Francisco? If you are, hi. Um, so if you're in San Francisco, you probably have heard of this store or you've been there. And yeah, this is just a canvas bag from there. And I, it fits very, very well, like things that are maybe like a hat, or like a smaller project or it's the beginning of a project um, so yeah and it has um, velcro 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 strap and your yarn can come out from this side so you can leave your ball of yarn in there and just knit off of that yeah I just like that it says San Francisco and the name of the store imagine it and that will be it I don't think I have anything else. And if you stack around until the end of this video, thank you for doing so. I think this was a, a pretty long one, or I guess longer than usual. I feel like I rambled on and on. I hope the lighting was okay, that the audio was okay. Let me know. If you have any complaints about the quality, you feel free to let me know. I will take the feedback. And let me know also if you like a single folded color like me or if you prefer the double folded one I'm, I want to know if the impression that I got that everyone likes a double folded color is actually true because maybe it's just in my mind I don't know but yeah let me know if you're team double folded color or single folded color how would you like single layer color I would like to know other than that 
I'll see you next time. I hope you're doing well. I hope this November is treating you well. If you are in the northern hemisphere, good luck with the lack of sunlight. I hope you can still manage to get some daylight or vitamin D. I know that's hard. I know in a lot of northern countries, your days feel very, very short and it feels like it's always darkness. So if that's the case for you, I send you good vibes. Try to be outside as much as possible, kind of enjoy the sun and the sunlight when there is some. If you are in the southern, if you are in the southern hemisphere, enjoy spring, knit some camisoles and t-shirts and yeah, I'll see you in December. Bye.